Caves YouTube channel where normally I'd be keeping you up to date with what's happening on our train layout downstairs but I thought it was getting a bit boring with looking at walls, stations and ferris wheels all the time so I thought I'd take a look at what we've been printing on the filament 3D printer and that's a Cryptex. Hi everyone, it's Sarah here. Before we go any further, there were just a few things that I wanted to add while I was editing. This is the Fantasy Cryptex created by Props and Beyond from their Puzzles and Props Volume 1. We are a licensed merchant and you can find this Cryptex in our Etsy store. I will chuck the link below. I believe this one has Nordic runes. Uh, as opposed to hieroglyphics that Dad will mention. Uh, while I'm here, I thought we'd take a quick peek at the other puzzles and props from their range. Um, as always, if you enjoy this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the alert button. I'll see you all later. Back to Dad. So Cryptix is a, uh, is a tube, as you can see, which has rings on it in this case, which have um, hieroglyphics on there, so you can actually set up a code um, to get it open, which we've done. Very simple code at the moment, but you can change the code and I'll show you that later. So this one we've printed in, with different parts and different colors, and I can uh, change the colors got some gems gems at the moment they can come out in fact they have to come out as part of getting it open so we can take the code the gems out which actually means I can print those in different colors I haven't taken gems out, the caps can come off as well. And we're left with the codex, the codex part where the rings, so you can see here, the rings do turn to set up our code. And I'll show you later how we can change the code. Once we have that off, we have two little dots on the codex itself, which show us where to line up our code holographics, which we've set up very simply now. In the black, it's probably a bit harder to see it on the camera. And our centerpiece then comes out. leaving us with the codex part and the central cylinder which is hollow in which you can hide your scrolls hide your gems hide your special rings or whatever you want to hide in there um, and then put it back in and lock it up we're changing this back again. So once this is changed back, it is now locked in place. You can randomly throw those wherever you like. As I said, all the gems come out, um, so we can put those. The one on the top comes out. Uh, obviously, you glue some in, but I will show you that. Um, Removing the gems on the end cap is critical to being able to get it to open because we have register holes on the end here and the gems when the cap is on does go through right through and stops it coming out so if the cap is on we put a gemstone in even if the codex is set up correctly 
the right code here. It still locks it in. So two parts to solving the puzzle. So quickly to show you how to change the code. So on the once you've got it apart on the end here is a lock ring. So the lock ring just turns and comes out, fits in the little slots here, and these rings come off. So each ring can come off, and then each ring will come apart. And it's actually set so that um, you can turn the ring in relation to the little locking. So that's the, the I guess the reference position. The locking, this one is this, if you like, this tooth or this cutout is square compared to the other ones which are round. And by moving the ring around, we can change what code comes up. So you can change the code on every ring the same way. Now I'm actually going to put it back to where it was before. And that's at the big cross, which you'll find hard to see on here. He might take some time to find it. There it is there. So where's the square gone? The square's around here now, so I need to put that X X on the on the outer ring and line it up with the square on the inner ring. And that gives us our code. Now just to sort of help index on every ring on the main cylinder. There's this little pressure spring here. That little pressure spring helps to sort of give it that, that sort of ratchety feel. You might hear the clicking. It's that little spring and it sort of gives it its positive positioning as you go around. So obviously to put it back together, we need to get the square on the ring lined up with the groove in the cylinder so that it goes back in. And then we can put this locking ring back on and click it in to hold it all together. We can then put in our, whoop, okay, so one of the rings is out. So it's not letting us put it in. Let's get up. Put it together. Put our gems back in. Do we have to get them lined up? So there we are, we're back together again. Um, I hope that was a nice little video showing you how that cryptix works um, and how you can have a bit of fun with it. So there you are. So farewell for now, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.